As an employer, you must protect your workers and other people from harm. Look for things that could cause injury or illness and decide if you're taking reasonable steps to prevent them. This is called assessing risk and it's straightforward for most small businesses. It's just one part of how you can manage risk to keep people safe and healthy at work. Look around your workplace for things that could cause harm. These are called hazards. Ask yourself, how are people using equipment? Are they working in disorganized or unsafe ways? Is your workplace in a suitable condition? For example, are walkways always clear? Your accident book and sickness records might help identify less obvious hazards. Think about hazards to health like repeated or heavy lifting, using chemicals and causes of work-related stress. Pay attention to potentially vulnerable people like pregnant workers, young people or those with disabilities. Remember other people who might be harmed like contractors or visitors. Speak to your workers as they may see potential hazards and have good ideas to help reduce the risks. Once you know the hazards in your workplace, decide who might be harmed and how, and what you're doing to protect them. It's then much easier to decide what further actions to take and who should carry them out. Sometimes you might not be able to remove a hazard completely, so think about how you can make it less likely to cause harm. For example, you could do the job another way, use different materials or tools, or provide personal protective equipment. If you employ five or more people, you must record the hazards, who might be harmed, and what you're doing to control the risks. You can use our risk assessment template and examples to help you. Review what you're doing to control risk whenever there are significant changes, like new staff or equipment. You should also review your controls if your workers spot a problem or after any accidents or near misses. Update your records with any changes you make. Protecting people is about what you do to control risks, not the forms you fill in. Once again, good day everyone. From the activity and the video that has taken place earlier, we hope that everyone has gotten a glimpse or has an idea of what our lesson will be about. Today, Group 1 will be tackling Module number 4, which is about risk management. Before we get into the lesson proper, let's first talk about our ILOs or the intended learning outcomes for this module. Number 1. Understand the approach to risk management through risk identification risk measurement and risk management or mitigation. Number two is to calculate risk costs. Number three is to identify the risk management processes. Number four, learn about the categories or different categories of the risk. Number five is to learn risk register, its parts, as well as how to create it. And lastly, number six is to learn reasons as to why risk management may fail. Since we have discussed the ILOs for this module, let us now proceed to the lesson proper. Let's talk about what is a risk. As seen on the screen, a risk is an uncertain event that may occur in the future. A risk is also known to be a factor that may prevent or delay the achievement of an organization's objectives. Lastly, a risk is not certain as its likelihood can only be estimated. Now, the reason why a risk is an uncertain event that may occur in the future is because risks are not only inevitable, but they are also unpredictable. Next, risk has the power to hinder an organization from reaching its desired goals. This is because risk consists of elements that may negatively impact the organization or the company. For example, if the workers in the company are exposed to risk, like getting injured, then those risks could negatively impact their productivity amongst the workers in the company. And risk may also have potential on ruining the reputation of the company. From the stated points mentioned earlier, it can be seen that a risk is made up of two parts. Number one, the probability of something going wrong. 
Number two, the negative consequences. If it does go wrong. However, it is important to note that not all risks are bad. This is because some level of risk must be taken into consideration in order to progress or prevent stagnation. And what happens when risks are involved? Panic and chaos. And now, what can we do once we encounter these risks? Let's find out. What is risk analysis? Risk analysis is a process that helps you to identify and manage potential problems that could undermine key business initiatives or projects. It is an essential planning tool and one that could save time, money, and reputation. This approach can be implemented in many situations such as planning projects as well as preparing for events such as natural disasters, theft, improving safety, managing risk in the workplace, and other more. How to use risk analysis? To carry out the risk analysis process, the following steps could be done. First is to identify threats and second is to estimate the risk. First step, identify threats. The first step in risk analysis is to identify the existing and possible threats that you might face. This step can be carried out by the use of the following. First, create a list of risks to see if any of these threats are relevant. Second, think of systems, processes, or structures that can be used to analyze the risk. Third and lastly, consult with other people to gather different insights and perspectives. Additional information. To help uncover threats, the following tools can be used. First, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, or SWOT analysis, failure mode and effects analysis, political, military, economic, social, information, infrastructure, physical environment and time, or PME, SIIPT, and Political, Economic, Social, and Technological, or commonly known as Best Analysis. To further explain what Gurley has mentioned, the following slides are the tools that we can use to uncover the threats within the organization. So the first tool that I will be discussing is the SWOT analysis, in which you are all familiar since we use it on our project feasibility study last semester. SWOT analysis stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It is a technique for assessing these four aspects of one's business in order to increase awareness of the factors that go into making a business decision or establishing a business strategy. To do this, SWOT analyzes the internal and external environment and the factors that can impact the viability of a decision. Moreover, SWOT can also uncover areas of the business that are holding you back or that your competitors could exploit if you don't protect yourself. For the next slide, the video that will be presented will show us how to effectively use a SWOT analysis. Every organization needs a clear strategy in place for growing its business, and every person needs career focus and direction. But how do you know where to start? This is where SWOT analysis comes in useful. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. By analysing these four areas of your business or career, you'll be able to cut through the noise and focus on what really matters. You can use SWOT analysis to identify a niche in the market or to help you develop your career. When you understand your strengths and weaknesses, you can exploit the most relevant opportunities and manage threats that may otherwise have surprised you. To start your SWOT analysis, you'll need a piece of paper, or you can print off the free worksheet at mindtools.com. Give yourself time to consider each of the four areas in depth, and try to be as realistic and rigorous as you can. Starting with strengths, ask yourself some key questions. What advantages do you or your organisation have? What do you do better than anyone else? What do people in your market see as your strengths? 
Moving on to weaknesses. Ask yourself what could you improve? What should you avoid? What factors lose you sales? What do outsiders see as your weaknesses? Next, you'll want to consider where your best opportunities lie. What interesting trends are you aware of? What advantages might arise from changes in technology, government policy, social patterns and the like? And this is really important. What options do your strengths open up for you? Finally, threats. Ask yourself what obstacles you or your organisation face. What is your competition doing that you should be worried about? Do you have bad debt or cash flow problems? And what threats do your weaknesses expose you to? When you're making your lists, be precise and prioritise. So the most important points are at the top. You'll find that your strengths and weaknesses are often internal, while opportunities and threats often relate to external factors. This is why SWOT analysis is often called internal-external analysis. When you've finished, you'll have made a good start on creating an effective strategy for success, and you'll have a better understanding of how you can move up the career ladder. For more information about SWOT analysis, see the article that accompanies this video. Moving on is the Failure Mode and Effects Analysis. It is a methodology aimed at allowing organization to anticipate failure during the design stage by identifying all the possible failures in the design or manufacturing process. It builds on tools such as risk analysis and cause and effect analysis to try to predict the failures before they happen. It is also helpful for evaluating an existing system or process to understand how proposed changes will impact the system. For the next tool, it stands for Political, Military, Economic, Social, Information, Infrastructure, Physical Environment, and Time. This strategic planning tool takes the analysis a bit further and includes more angles of the situation. Moreover, it is an environmental scanning and monitoring technique like the SWOT, PESTEL, and QUEST analysis. In addition, it was developed by the United States Army and used as a way to execute a more complex strategy in foreign countries with a complex and uncertain context to map. Another tool that we can use is the PEST analysis. It is a simple and widely used tool that helps you to analyze the political, economic, sociocultural, and technological changes in your business environment. This tool is useful for understanding the overall market environment since the more threats or risk factors in the market, the more difficult it is to do business. Then, by analyzing the market forces at play, the more strategic you can become in planning and decision making. So now, we will show you a video and we'll look at how you can use PEST analysis to understand and adapt to your current and future business environment. Welcome to MindTools video learning series. All organizations need to understand and adapt to the environments they operate in. These might include factors outside of your control, such as laws, lifestyle changes, and technological trends. But when you're able to anticipate how these factors might impact your business in the future, you'll find it easier to identify and seize new opportunities and avoid potential threats. So how can you analyze your business environment effectively? A powerful tool for doing this is pest analysis. This is a simple four-point framework you can use to assess the political, economic, socio-cultural, and technological factors at play. Your analysis can help you to understand the forces of change at play in your environment and guide your strategic decision-making. Start by considering the political factors that affect your business. For example, are any elections due to be held? and how are they likely to play out? Will legislation or taxation laws change? And how could this affect your organization? 
Then do the same for economic factors. How stable is the economy? Is it growing or shrinking? What is the unemployment rate? How is inflation impacting your industry? And are these factors likely to change much? Next, consider the socio-cultural factors of your external environment. How might the rate of population growth or decline affect your business? What about the quality of the health and educational systems? Are social and cultural values changing? And what will the impact of this mean for you? Finally, brainstorm the technological factors influencing you. Are there any new technologies you could be using? Or are any being developed that could affect your industry in the future? Once you've finished your analysis, brainstorm the opportunities and threats that each area presents. Then, identify actions that you can take to exploit any opportunities and to manage or eliminate threats. To learn more about pest analysis, read the article that accompanies this video. Scenario analysis is a risk assessment tool used to identify and quantify the occurrence of operational risk scenarios. It is a set of practices and tools that can be used in the context of risk management to produce a forward-looking view of the risk facing an organization. Moreover, this tool is used to enhance critical strategic thinking. A key feature of scenario is that they should challenge conventional wisdom about the future. In a world full of uncertainty, scenarios are intended to explore alternatives that may significantly alter the basis for business-as-usual assumptions. The second step to carry out the risk analysis process is by estimating the risk. Once you have identified the threats you are facing, you need to calculate the likelihood of these threats and their possible impact. One way of doing this is to make your best estimate of the event's probability occurring and by multiplying this to the amount it will cost you to set things right if it happens. For instance, since your landlord has recently increased rents for other businesses, you think that there is an 80% chance of this happening within the next year. If this occurred, it will cost your business an extra $500,000 over the next year. To compute for the risk value, you have to multiply the probability event, which is 0.8, by the cost event of $500,000. That will give you a product of $400,000 risk value. And now that we have identified the value of the risk we can encounter, we should start looking at ways on how to manage them. Risk management encompasses identifying, analyzing, and responding to risk factors that part of a business. Effective risk management means attempting to control future outcomes as much as possible by acting proactively rather than reactively. Therefore, effective risk management can reduce the possibility of a risk occurring. Once the risk is identified, we can use the risk management cycle to manage it. Risk management cycles are an essential part of business practice to achieve the objectives of risk management as well as to identify weaknesses in the organization. This cycle is a valuable tool for organizations to know how to handle or manage risk opportunities that can be improved. It comprises of five steps. In step one, confirming strategy. Step two, identifying and assessing risk. Step three, challenging and evaluating controls. Step four, taking action. And lastly, the step five, monitoring and reporting. And now, let's proceed to the risk management cycle, step one. The first step of the risk management cycle is to confirm the strategy by having three components such as mission, strategy, and goals. They provide a structured and process-oriented approach to manage the risk. Each component of the risk management cycle that is a problem is managed in an integrated process that requires the involvement of the entire organization. 
in terms of mission, it is crucial to define the purpose of risk management to identify potential problems before they occur so that risk handling activities may be planned and invoked to mitigate the adverse impacts on achieving objectives. Next is the strategy. A high-level plan defines on how your project risk management process will be executed. That includes the funds, tools, and approaches that will be used to in order to perform risk identification, assessment, mitigation, and monitoring activities. And lastly, the goals which has a unit-specific target. The ultimate goal of risk management is the preservation of the physical and human assets of the organization for the successful continuation of its operations. The second step in risk management cycle is to identify and assess the risk. In risk identification, one must ask what are the threats and uncertainties associated with my organization's or unit objective. Always remember to separate out the risk into its cause and possible effect. Be concise and clear and do not concentrate on symptoms only. Next is to assess the risk. One must assess the risk on its impact or li likelihood that it will occur in the organization. Next is to prioritize the risk. We must get input from appropriate individual in order to pr prioritize the risk properly or appropriately. The third step is to challenge and evaluate controls. In order to control policy, action, procedure, or process design to prevent risk and residual risk should only be measured. The fourth step in the risk management cycle is where the action must take into place. For serious risk where controls are weak or absent, for risk where the risk appetite is exceeded and examined cost versus benefit is where the action must put into. There are four types of action that can be made. First is to tolerate, to treat, to substitute, or terminate. The four types of action will be decided upon by your risk appetite. For the final step in the risk management cycle pertains about monitor and report. First is to use the standard format for capturing data such as risk register. Second is to review all the risk at least annually. Third is to review all the serious risks more often depending on the situation. Fourth is to report risk to the senior management or board. And lastly is to make the risk register available to stakeholders to show good governance. Furthermore, aside from using the management cycle as a means of managing risk, the other structure that can be used are the following. Avoid the risk, share the risk, accept the risk, and control the risk. In avoiding the risk, it means it doesn't get involved in a business venture, passing on a project, or skipping a high-risk activity. It is a good option when taking the risk involves no advantage to your company or when the cost of addressing the effects is not worthwhile. The what-if analysis can be used to explore your options when making a decision as well as to avoid the risk. The what-if analysis is a specific type of scenario analysis wherein you can ask a series of what-if questions to predict potential complications and the impact on the company operations. On the other hand, share the risk. You could also opt to share the risk and gain potential with other people, teams, organizations, or third parties. For instance, you share risk when you insure office building and your inventory with a third-party insurance company or when you partner with an organization in a joint product development initiative. Next is accept the risk. This option is usually best when there's nothing you can do to prevent or mitigate risk. When the potential loss is less than the cost of insuring against the risk or when the potential gain is worth accepting the risk. Before you decide to accept a risk, conduct an impact analysis to see the full consequences of the risk. You may not be able to do anything about the risk itself, but you can likely come up with a contingency plan to cope with its consequences. However, it's important to bear in mind that everyone's definition of acceptable risk is different. 
So be sure to communicate with others before you make a decision and use tools like the prospect theory to predict people's different reactions to risk. Lastly, control the risk. Business experiments are an effective way to reduce risk. They involve rolling out high-risk activity but on a small scale and in a controlled way. You can use experiments to observe where problems occur and to find ways to introduce preventive and detective actions before you introduce the activity on a larger scale. Preventive actions involves aiming to prevent a high-risk situation from happening. It includes health and safety training, firewall protection, on corporate servers, and cross-training your team. Detective action involves identifying the points in a process where something could go wrong and then putting steps in place to fix the problems promptly if they occur. Detective actions include double-checking finance reports, conducting safety testing before a product is released, or installing sensors to detect product defects. Plan, do, check, act is a similar method of controlling the impact of a risky situation. Like a business experiment, it involves testing possible ways to reduce risk. The tools for phases guide you through an analysis of the situation, creating and testing a solution, checking how well this work, and implementing the solution. Now that the risk management processes have been explained, there are five categories of risk that we can learn in order for us to identify them easily. First, financial. Reduction in funding, poor cash flow management, fraud or theft, poor budgeting. Second, operational. Failure of an IT system, health and safety risk, lack of succession planning. Third, reputational. Organization engages in activities that could threaten its good name through association with other bodies, staff or members acting in a criminal or unethical way, poor stakeholder relations. Fourth, governance and compliance. Lack of oversight by the board, segregation of duties not defined formally, ensuring compliance with funders, terms and conditions. Compliance with applicable legislation such as taxation law, data protection, health and safety law. And lastly, strategic. Engages in activity at variance with its stated objectives. Fails to engage in an activity that would support its stated objectives. Risk Register A risk register is a management tool used to record relevant details relating to risk. It is a database of information on risk. Since we have learned what a risk register is and how it can help us when we deal with risk, let's learn more in depth about the content of a risk register. So shown on screen are the parts of a risk register. Risk description. It is a clear description of the risk, its cause, and consequences. Next is the controls or actions already in place. Here you have to list what is actually happening and which reduces the impact of a risk or its likelihood. Next, the impact. So here it is a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being the minor and 5 being catastrophic. And note that this is to be residual impact only. Next is the likelihood. It is also a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being remote and 5 being unavoidable. And also note that this is also a residual likelihood only. And next is the weighting. So this is the risk ranking. It is also a calculated figure. Example, impact times likelihood. Next is the risk owner. This is the administrative unit, management position, or group who are in the best position to manage the risk on an ongoing basis. Next is the further actions required. So these are the controls or solutions which have yet to be acted upon, which could reduce the impact or likelihood of a risk. And lastly, the date. This is the expected date as to when the actions shown under further actions required will be in place and effectively addressing the risk. Here is an example of what a risk register looks like. 
we have the reference number, risk description, controls or action already in place, impact, likelihood, weighting, as well as its corresponding level type of risk, the ones in colors orange, red, and light green. And next is the risk owner, further actions required, and lastly, the date when further actions will be in place. These are some of the reasons as to why risk management may fail. Limitations of scope. If the company only limits their scope or constraints to a small area, then they will not be able to pinpoint other risk present within other areas of the company. Lack of top management support. If the top management does not support the idea of risk management process being implemented, or if they ignore it and if they do not keep track of it, then their careless actions will jeopardize the company, thus making it more vulnerable to other risk. Failure to share information. If everyone will not be open to communication, there could be instances wherein people may not be aware of the other risk present within the company. Lastly, the process is not embedded within planning and management system. It is crucial and important to implement risk management process at the start of every plan, as it could help companies foresee the possible risk at hand and prevent them. Almost every decision we make in business involves a risk of some kind. Risk is made up of the likelihood of something going wrong and the negative consequences if it does. Sometimes this is small, other times it's large, and the consequences can be serious. This is why weighing up risk before you make a decision is so important. The better you understand it, the more prepared you are to manage it. Carrying out a formal four-step risk analysis is the best way to make sure your decisions are robust and well considered. First, you need to identify your threats. These could come from anywhere. For instance, what happens if your computer system fails, if a team member is sick, or if a key supplier lets you down? Make a note of these and spend enough time identifying everything that might go wrong. Once you have this list, you need to assess the value of each risk. To do this, estimate the probability of each event happening and multiply this by what it would cost to set things right. This will give you a value for each risk. Next, you need to manage significant risks, and there are several ways to do this. Ask yourself. Can I do anything to eliminate them? What assets can I use to counter them? And can I come up with a contingency plan to minimize their effects? Once you've completed your risk analysis and worked out how you'll handle adverse events, you'll want to carry out frequent reviews. This could mean going over your risk analysis from time to time to make sure that nothing has changed. Or you might want to test your systems and plans on a regular basis. Carrying out a formal risk analysis when you have to make a big decision is useful because it helps you analyze the threats you might be facing and come up with contingency plans to manage them. You can find out more about risk analysis in the article that accompanies this video. Again, we are Group 1. Thank you for listening, stay safe, and have a great day ahead. Kindly stay tuned for the activity and the quiz that will be shown on the screen shortly.